The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, this is Patty Hunter with Patty's Page. Today I have two special guests on Skype. One is Jean Roach and the other one is Jimbo Simmons. And we're going to be talking about Leonard Peltier, a Native American who has been imprisoned for over 43 years, as well as what's happening with the indigenous people all over the world and how they're trying to get help to get equality and justice for all. Thank you. Be right with you. Jean Roach and Jimbo. Jimbo, what's your last name? Simmons. Simmons. Welcome to my show, Patty's Page. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm doing fine. And it's a uh Pleasure to be on your show. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, where are you? Uh, in Austria, somewhere in the mountains. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, it's been uh, very beautiful. Today it's raining. Oh, oh. And uh, a couple of days it was, you know, a little cloudy, sunshine. Got to get out and see the mountains. In the background, I see a symbol. Of course. Uh, what does that mean? American Indian Movement, uh, the organization that uh, we work with as well, and we represent. And uh, we're just here visiting friends, and then as well as visiting friends, we're uh, developing work around uh, the case of Leonard Peltier, uh, particularly uh, the case of uh, uh, human rights as, as a human rights defender. So the reason why you are in <clears throat> Europe, you and Jean, is because to spread the word for your cause. What is actually? We came for several different reasons. Um, you know, you can't just represent one side of genocide. You know, so we <laughs> we, we bring awareness to several different um, tragedies in Americas. So um, let's talk about justice and human rights. As what is basic human natural rights? What does that mean to you? Well, for me, I think uh, as as indigenous peoples, and to me, I always have to identify as, as the original peoples of the land. Yes, you are. Uh, being what nation we are. And that's really what we mean by indigenous. Many times, uh, I think indigenous to me now is becoming another colonial way of uh, colonizing our people and and getting us on the same page and and getting us into a whole new uh, area of uh, of uh, globalization. You know, in this instance, what remaining resources are left for indigenous peoples. Uh, in the world, and which brings us to, you know, United Nations and other international meetings to talk about, you know, our uh, rights as indigenous peoples, but more so when we talk about uh, our rights, we have to refer them as our natural rights, uh, rights that were given to us in the beginning of time, but also uh, uh, equate them with our human rights and civil political rights, but understanding that uh, civil rights or human rights, natural rights is what we're, you know, we're talking about as well. Also in that, in that same, it would be treaty rights. Yes. Know? And uh, I think uh, the world community understands very clearly when 
they talk about treaties and uh, the legal standings of, of treaties. And I think uh, many Indian nations that have entered into these agreements with uh, the U.S. government stand in, you know, uh, in that uh, forum as well. And, and these are recognition of those treaties. And I think uh, the work that's been done the last 40, 50 years in the United Nations, mm -hmm. uh, which also brought about the work, uh, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, uh, and also brought about some uh, some recognition of their issues, but also uh, uh, not much has also been done as well. And we can talk about, you know, the, the sacred sites, we can talk about pipelines, for example, that's a big issue that's going on with uh, indigenous peoples and lands, you know, and climate change. So I think these issues affect uh, all, our, all the people, you know, just uh, indigenous peoples in North America, but more so uh, around the world. And you're going, to, <coughs> and you're going, I'm sorry, dear, continue. What? I was coughing. Um, and you're going throughout Europe to spread the word of what's happening with your people and with Leonard Pelche. Right? Yes, that's, that's definitely the, uh, one of the uh, 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 priorities. Yeah, a lot of people don't quite understand that we, when we talk about Leonard Pelche, it didn't start in the 70s. This is an ongoing war that's been waged against uh, our nations, Lakota Nation. He's from Chakta. Huh? All of our different nations, we have over 500 in the United States. This war is continually since first contact and it's affected every part of our um, circle. So Leonard Peltier does represent the ultimate case of injustice, which we all suffer every one of our tribes. Is he a political? Excuse me? Is he a political prisoner? Of course, he's all he's like a political prisoner. He's a you know, he's a prisoner for defending the earth for our different rights that we um, or people represent a lifestyle which has been tried to been at which the United States has tried to stop off since day one. So what I'm saying is that genocide is an ongoing thing. And then her Peltier, as a political prisoner, is related to Crazy Horse, Sitting Bull, the Dakota uh, 38 plus 1 that were hung, those were all prisoners. And we have other prisoners still in prison that um, are there just merely because they're Indian or because of their beliefs. So if you want to say political prisoner in that sense, yes. I'd like to uh, apologize for my people what we had done what? to you. I'd like to apologize for what we had done to your wonderful, beautiful people. Uh, my parents came from Europe and Canada. My husband is part Mohawk. So he came up with the, um, with the British up north to Canada, the Loyalists. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't think we particularly blame you, but we're just talking about society. When they ignore the whole problem of what's going on, is kind of a accomplice to the colonization, which is still continuing within our nations. Do you see any so, any uh, reconciliation between both parties? Yeah, there is. Actually, through the movement of protecting Unchimaka, which means Mother Earth, we are developing uh, solidarity with other groups that are protecting that earth. Mm -hmm. uh, other, you know, all, all related, you know, Madakiasi, that means that we're related to everything, the birds, the trees, you know, and other struggles of other people or relatives around the world. Our creator made us equal, yet we don't listen to him, do we? Well, um, I think, uh, I believe everybody's equal unless, you know, I get slapped in the face by you. <laughs> You're so funny. Then it might change my mind, but, you know, I think everybody has a fair term that um, we can treat everybody as an equal. How? Oh, that's all we ask for. Remember, it's the basic right of justice as a human right. 
you know, he's been railroaded. We have all the documentation. You know, his co-defendants were acquitted on the basis of self-defense. That should apply to him also. But of course, they change the rules when it comes to um, or people, really. It's been changed so many times. Even today in North Dakota, they're changing the voting law to um. alienate our people from voting. You know, so there's... We're still being attacked, so if you think the war is over, that's not, you know, it's not the deal. It's just that some people can no longer see it. And there's been... a lot of things mm. going wrong. Uh -huh. So that's why we all uh, center around Leonard's case, because until his case sees justice, all Native people will not have any justice. So he's the vocal point of, uh, of everything right now. Yes, he needs to get out of the prison. He's been in there for 43 years. If that was your grandfather or if that was your uncle, your relative, he went to major heart surgery a year ago. We just want, you know, compassion from people to help us get him out. We're not here to debate the issues. We're just asked for human um, compassion and the facts, you know, speak for themselves, injustice. And we're not asking for too much to be treated as humans. That's all we're asking. We're not asking for extra, you know, anything extra but the basic standards that everybody else is judged by. Everybody is... Um, how many organizations are you working with in Europe right now? We have our sponsors that uh, brought us over and then we've been meeting them to other people as long as, along the way. How so it's not a set plan, and any we show our solidarity with other um, nations, like with the Chevron. Uh, we went to the Swiss Bank, UBC, and we uh, joined them with one of their actions because those people may not have a voice here, but if we can support them, you know, fighting this corporation, which we all should know is their major enemy for the earth, so. We just uh, go in solidarity with, and that's what we're asking back. Are you, are you in solidarity with our Canadian brothers and sisters? Of course, yeah, we always have been. Yeah. Ever since I remember, my grandmother was born in Saskatchewan. Oh, really? We have our, yeah, we have our relatives that went up there, you know, during the with sitting bowl way back, and there's a... There's uh, communities up there that were left up there. So we're related up there. But not only that, throughout the uh, fight for the justice, Canadian tribes have always been part of the movement. And you, my friend, Jimbo, where are, I, where are you originally from, dear? Originally from, uh, well, I was born in Oklahoma, and my people are Choctaw. You know, they are part of the Trail of Death and Tears, which oh. were also referred to as the Trail of Tears. I heard and, of that. Uh, mm -hmm. But currently I reside in Washington State, and uh, I work with uh, many different organizations that are uh, protecting uh, indigenous peoples, the environment, and uh, rights of uh, prisoners. So, uh, but the organization I I work with is also the American Indian Movement, Waste West, which is based in San Francisco. Yeah. How how are we being able to help your people? I mean, what can we as the country help? How can we help you? How can my show help you? I think by um, letting people know, you know, that we exist, first of all, some people think we still live in teepees, you know. But let's get beyond the stereotypes and re-educate, you know. Um, that's the best tool we have is learning about each other and understanding, not believing the stereotypes set up by uh, mainstream society about Native people. And understanding there's a lot of things going on in Canada. There's a lot of missing and murdered people especially, all over, but more from there. Especially women. Yes. So we uh, 
we su- you know we support all of those different you know movements and uh, we have a lot of we would like to have a lot of support we're going to go see the um, people that are protecting the earth that come about forest tell me about them and uh, you know just show them that we support and we're in solidarity with them for protecting our mother and everybody knows that the fight for water i mean if the corporate corporations take over our water you know yeah we're under their thumb forever so people need to realize that water is life many with choni is a real statement yeah so like i said our work is all intertwined within other fights um, or basic right to have good food you know there's a lot of um, things destroying our people so that's an issue we can't ignore along with Leonard sitting in there he's been in there for so long he could use some support and we have a website it's called who is Leonard Paltier dot info and you can look at that site you can get details of what I'm talking about um, He has There's other things he can help. He has artwork. He's a great artist. So one of the things, myself as an artist, we would like to promote is through our art. You know, we can relate to people on an artistic level, you know. So we do, uh, we bring Leonard's uh, postcards with us. And he, if you look at the website, you can see his beautiful paintings that he does. And he supports his legal fund and is committed to that. So they need a lot of support, and um, we do a fight. We're not getting paid for it, but it's in our heart. So we appreciate it when you would like to interview us and get the word out. How many other countries in Europe need freedom from injustice and have human rights for life and to freely live in peace? How how many other countries have you gone to that have uh, this happening to their people? Is it every country that you've been to or? I think every country has its issues and a lot, a lot of the ways that we connect us through are, you know, Mother Earth fight. You know, we all got to fight for life. So in that, Leonard Paltier is our main focal point, but educating people on knowing who he is, you know, is um, Yeah. One of our um, first approaches. You know, it, you know, the more educated a civilization is, the more injustice there is. I don't understand the logic with human minds. Why they do that? They think they're more powerful than other people or better than anyone else. I don't understand why they think that way about someone they don't even know or or is different from them or whatever. I don't know. I think it's been there for a lot. I mean, ever since I remember, we've always had the double standard. So it's just getting more intense. So, Jimbo, uh, your role, what is your title in AIM? Well, I have really no title, I think. Uh, I'm um, just a, a member and I, I continue to do the work that needs to be done and for me that has taken me to uh, uh, the UN and lots of work that's being done there and it's also has encouraged me to, uh, to visit many other areas where many other indigenous peoples are struggling and showing our solidarity and support for one another and I think uh, as part of the American Indian Movement, that is our responsibility, uh, which shouldn't have to uh, be bestowed upon us to, you know, to tell us we need to go do this or we need to go do that. I think, I think uh, that's part of our, our, our spiritual uh, obligation, responsibility, uh, when it comes to uh, protecting our rights as Native people, Indigenous peoples. Uh, especially when it comes to uh, uh, the earth, you know, uh, Mother Earth. Uh, and, you know, that's part of the uh, consciousness and awareness, I think, that brings us together, uh, no matter where we're at uh, uh, or country that we might be from, because I think it's 
it's uh, that's part of the uh, uh, the confusion and the chaos that uh, why we can't wrap it around our minds of why we live in this kind of a world. You know, I think uh, we all have that um, uh, awareness at some point. You know, we all understand that. I think we just have to remember it a little bit more. And uh, I think some people refer to it as genetic memory, you know, and uh, I think sometimes that's the uh, uh, the voices that we sometimes we hear about, you know, and communicating to us as, you know, what are what is our duties and responsibilities, you know. Uh, Do you find there's more awareness happening nowadays about your people? I think uh, for me personally, yes, I've seen a lot of growth, you know, uh, a lot of youth are stepping up, you know, uh, a lot of the, the music, you know, culture, mm -hmm. uh, that's also been, you know, people are identifying themselves as, as Native, as Indigenous people, uh, or, or Native American, or uh, American Indian, but I think uh, uh, the real term is we are... Uh, you know, the people, and the people being the name that we were given in the beginning of time. Yes. You know, whether it was, uh, for me, Choctaws, you know, and uh, I'm sure for other tribes, nations, their, uh, their tribal name is helps refer to themselves as the people. And I think that that's where uh, uh, respect for that begins, uh, you know, is a big part of healing to today in this this time that we're in. We're so everyone has a duty and a responsibility no matter uh, what color we come from really. That's true. You know, right. If you believe in the, the, you know, the four colors and what we've been taught in teachings and you know our you know our, our teachers and our mentors. And for me mine has been uh, uh, people within American in a movement. Yes. And, and, and in this case, uh, even Leonard Peltier, you know, who's doing the time, you know, the American Indian Movement is celebrating 50 years. Wow. You know, and Leonard Peltier has been in prison for 43 of those years. So I think uh, that speaks to the, the dedication of uh, the struggle that our people are committed to, you know, as a movement. and. It's not easy to to identify, uh, define, but I think everyone has their their uh, their journey in that way. That's true. We are trying to get uh, Jimmy Lee Young, who is a native Mayan, who uh, to come to Fort Wayne, Indiana. That's where we live, and to uh, bring awareness of Native Americans with, through song. So, that's cool, man. And we are aware of your problems and your situation. My boss, Terrence Dorn, or Terry Dorn, interviewed Leonard many moons ago. And this was when, back in the, what, 80s? Back in the 80s. And we still, I mean, we interviewed Chauncey, his son. I mean, there's got to be a, a break somewhere. He's got to find freedom somehow. We, we have to. What would you like to say to my audience so they can help out, to encourage them to uh, help? Well, I think we have a couple different campaigns going on. One is um, letters to Trump, which um, we have postcards of people you contact them international office and you can have people you know sign them and send them to the white house mm. of course the regular things emails and phone calls you know to the white house and the one thing about what we're hoping with trump is that he don't like the fbi so we're hoping maybe he might give leonard a break and freedom yeah 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 and um, you Jim? You, Jimbo? So that's one of them, and then, um, 
what we're working on is an international campaign to have people um, bring his name up everywhere, you know. Yes. As for, you know, understanding and supporting us in our fight to get him free. And like I said, all we want is justice. And we feel that's a human right. You know, we should be able to have justice for people on every different level. And that are being the one that suffered the most 43 years, he deserves freedom. Mm -hmm. And the lies and the manipulations need to be um, exposed. That's true. So we have the documentation. I mean, it's just like, I don't know who holds the actual key, but there's somebody holding it back because it's in black and white. And if you can't read it or see it, then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Someone is blind. It's pretty, clear, and, yeah, it's pretty clear that he needs to get out. Someone in the government, and, the FBI, are blind. They, they want to save face. That's why they're holding him in, because they don't want to admit that they were the ones that made the mistakes first, not your people. Oh, yeah, well, they already got Butler and Ralphie were acquitted on that. Yeah. On that fact that, you know, yeah. they attacked the people, you know, they attacked our camp. Right. So, you know, and mostly it was all children. Most of us were under the age of 18. How old That's the you? thing that we got away from them, you know. How old were you when this happened? 14. 14? My brother was 10. Oh. And he gave himself up because he couldn't run with us. We had a choice to go with them or give ourselves up. And when he got on top of the hill, they just shot at him. You know, he was a child, so they don't care. At the same time, there's some um, other crooked things going on on Pine Ridge about the land transfers that Dick Wilson did on that day. So um, there's never been an investigation into Joe Stunt's death. Wow. You know, they all made a big deal about the FBI, but poor brother died there that day too. And he deserves justice. And so did they all, all the other people that died during the reign of terror. They've never had justice. You know. There's over 60 cases. And that was just in the 70s. And we come up to date, there's so many things wrong. Yeah, I know. We love you, you know. Thank you. Appreciate all your More help. More power. Really. Right on. <laughs> so we have, this is towards the end of our interview. I'd like to do this again with you sometime. If we could. Great. You're yeah. more than welcome to come on my show anytime. You can use my uh, show as a speech, you know. Oh, yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Because every little bit helps. And, you know, people can write letters to Leonard. His address is on our website. And they got some rules about that. You got to look under, um, I think they can, no postcards, no. There are new rules. I'm not sure exactly what they are, but they're on the website. Okay, dear. You have yeah. to be a special rules to write him a letter from you. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, we love you, and may the Creator be with you and with your cause. And uh, blessings. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings to you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Speed, my love, until we meet again. You're always in my heart and every dream. Don't let this time apart give in to all our fears. God will keep us close from up above. So until God speak.